Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. Today is December 18th, 2014, and we are continuing our series on HARP, HARP 101. Search it on YouTube. And uh, you're going to see a whole lot of crazy stuff in these next series of videos. Our last video was on how HARP really works. Please check that out. Today we are going to be covering uh, mind control. This is at climateviewer.com. Click on HARP table of contents on the sidebar or at the bottom of the page depending on your mobile and click on this so what's the deal with harp and controlling people's brains it doesn't control people's brains but it definitely affects it in a negative way and we're going to break that down in graphic detail electrical signals electrical interference electromagnetic radiation from outside your body can affect your mood because your brain works on electricity and hormones. Electrical signals produce hormones that affect your mood and everything else, your health, all of that. So external um, electrical signals, which are covered in detail on our EMF page, I suggest everybody go over there and look at uh, how cell phones, Wi-Fi, and even EMF and uh, can affect your brain and otherwise but let's save that for another video today we're talking about harp um, harp produces extremely low frequency waves elf waves are up up to 100 Hertz are once more naturally occurring but they can also be produced artificially such as Navy's project sanguine for submarine communications elf waves are not normally noticed by the unaided senses yet their resonant effect upon the human body has been connected to both physiological disorders and emotional distortion Infrasound vibration up to 20 hertz can subliminally influence brain activity to align itself to delta, theta, alpha, and beta wave patterns, inclining an audience towards everything from alertness to passivity. Infrasound could be used tactically as elf waves endure for great distances, and it could be used in conjunction with media broadcasts as well. That's super creepy. What are they talking about? altering my brain and using elf waves with media broadcasts please look into that um so we're talking about very low frequency ranges uh from vlf to elf ulf and even lower now vlf facilities are all over the world um elf couple there's only like two of them that are really big and the ulf would be the ionospheric heaters now do you do you, are you not inclined to believe me that this is messing with your brain? The Russian government would agree with me. And here's what they say. Under the high-frequency active aurora research program, the U.S. is creating a new integral geophysical weapon that may influence the near-Earth medium with high-frequency radio waves. State Duma said the significance is a qualitative leap of this qualitative leap could be compared to the transition from cold steel to firearms or for conventional weapons to nuclear weapons. We are now passing the nuclear age to the electromagnetic age. Directed energy weapons are all the rave, space-based lasers, uh, space-based microwave, uh, anti-satellite uh, demolition systems, rockets, lasers, you name it. This is Star Wars, people. Star Wars. Uh, these conclusions were made by the Commission of the States Duma International Affairs and Defense Committee. The committee reports that the U.S. is planning to test three facilities of this kind. One of them is located on a military testing ground in Alaska, and its full-scale tests are to begin in early 2003. That would be HARP. The second one is in Greenland, and the third is in Norway. Greenland has a uh, ISCAT uh, at Sandstrom, and it has a AMISR. Um, up there, so I don't know which one they're referring to, and then Norway has Tromso's ionospheric heater. So those are the three they're talking about there. When these facilities are launched into space from Norway, Alaska, and Greenland, a closed contour will be created and a truly fantastic integral potential for influence in the near Earth medium. A integral potential for influencing the near earth medium near earth being the troposphere where we live so they're saying that what they're doing the ionosphere is going to affect us down here on the ground the u.s. plans to carry out large-scale scientific experiments under the heart program and not controlled by the global community will create weapons capable of breaking radio communication lines and equipment installed on spaceship and rockets provoke serious accidents and electrical networks and in oil and gas pipelines and 
have a negative impact on the mental health of people populating entire regions. They demanded that an international ban be put on such large-scale geophysical experiments. Geophysical, huh? Others are engaging even in an eco-type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. Uh, Secretary of Defense William Cohen stated that at the Terrorism, Weapons of Mass Destruction, and U.S. Strategy Policy, the SAM Strategy at the Sam Nunn Policy Forum, April 28, 1997, before this came out. So both of these guys are talking about using the Earth and electromagnetic waves as a weapon. This is the new paradigm. Forget about nuclear weapons, people. They're old. Um, and like I said, you know, we have all these mapped out over here. You can come see these, all of these facilities. These are VLF facilities, and I also have the HARP facilities up, such as, you know, HARP, Tromso, High Pass, Sura. You can just double click the icons over here to see them. Arecibo, the new array is down in the dome. The NMRF, there's another HARP. Super darn at Jicamarca, Peru, and Shigaraki MU University. All these space based weapons systems. Also scientific platforms, but we could argue about that all day long. I happen to know for a fact that they are involved in space based weapons um, systems. So, what's going on here? VLF facilities have been used for a very long time all around the world. You can see them here. I gave you a couple examples, and these are to communicate with. Uh, submarines mostly and uh, before that what they they had this thing called project elf it was mentioned at the top of the article here project sanguine project seafarer um, there's these two facilities one is in clam lake wisconsin the other is in republic michigan together the two of them as you can see in this chart right here uh, they together produce an elf wave that is a one watt signal that can be heard worldwide um, they put a couple, uh, I think a million watts in and one watt out. And these cables are strewn all the way through the woods, <laughs> across county lines and all that in America. And you can see them here. Um, see the X right here is one and the F is the other. And if you come over to Climate Viewer 3D, those are also right here. So there's one, there's the other. You scroll in, you can see that here's the transmission building and the cables run along these long paths I'm a real dork for going and mapping this out in Google Earth but I wanted to know I wanted to see it for myself I saw the PDF I said let me go find the wires myself but yeah very big facility um, lots of uh, protesting going along with that people were cutting down the wires there's something called the Taos hum um, associated with that and it, it gets even weirder a 1971 Navy study determined that electromagnetic fields associated with elf caused stunted growth in rats the military sat on these detail the details of these findings until 1976 even as concerned citizens worked to unearth information on potential health impacts of elf waves the Navy convened an ad hoc committee for the review of biomedical and ecological effects of elf radiation to analyze their research in 1973 the committee's members raised concerns over potentially serious health problems related to the technology Though their worries carried little weight with militarists desiring a different message. Sound familiar? The ad hoc committee's findings only reached the public once Senator Gaylord Nelson, an environmentalist and progressive Democrat, raised a stink and released a report, the report himself. God bless him. So um, this facility allegedly was closed and they said the reason that they closed it was improvements in communications technology or changing re and changing requirements of today's Navy made elf communication system no longer necessary Davis said all communications with submarines will now be done by 12 very low frequency transmitters located worldwide these VLF facilities worldwide as you can see here you come up here to awesome click on this and then you go here and you can go see them there's two antennas there you can scroll down come here VTX shaped like a diamond a couple of these short, kind of shaped like the Star of David oddly enough um, this one's not on cam let's go over here to Harold Holt at this one and Harold Holt's a real well-known one as you can see here um, 
here I put these directly on top of each antenna pole. You can see the shadow coming from it there, so you know that I'm being accurate with this. And there is a picture associated with that that you can see. Here's the transmitter's front. It's shaped like a diamond or a star. So um, these facilities are what they're using now to speak with the uh, submarines. And what do we need uh, the harp to create L4 if you've already got it covered? Well, anyway, um, there's another L facility. It's over in Russia, and it's actually just on this, this tower right here. And it says that it's actually 10 decibels more powerful than the U.S. Navy 76 hertz L transmission system. So they got this one tower. It's 10 decibels louder. That's uh, three times. I think three decibels is double the volume. So... Anyway, um, that's much louder, <laughs> and it doesn't cover multiple two states and you know several miles of cable. But regardless, uh, the Russians have one as well. It's called Zevs, and it's at Tula Blast. Well, those are old school. This is all old school. Everything I showed you before, very old school. The new school is HARP and uh, these ionospheric heaters. And what they do is HARP produced 3.6 million watts with these diesel engines and some natural gas, and they turn it into electricity, they they pump it into the sky, it becomes 5 billion watts, 5 gigawatts, or as Doc Brown in uh, Back to the Future said, 1.21 gigawatts, which was a lightning bolt. So 1.21 gigawatts is a lightning bolt, and that's what they needed to travel through time and space, and HAR produces 5 of those, 5 gigawatts. Well, they're building an even bigger one over in Norway called IceCat 3D, and it's going to be 100 billion watts, 100 gigawatts. According to Bernard Eastland, John Hersher, and a whole bunch of other people, 100 gigawatts is what you need to modify the jet stream. So stay tuned for that. Regardless, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of argument about this 2.5 hertz signal coming from HARP on um, these low, extremely, extremely low frequency. They're actually not even in the ELF range. ELF is supposed to be three to three hundred hertz. These are below three hertz. So we're talking about magnetosonic, shear Alvin waves, emic waves, these sorts of things. These are these are terms you're probably not familiar with, but I'm just trying to give these to the scientific guys out there that are interested. 2.5 hertz signal active. This is from Trond. Uh, it's a VLF website for radio guys. And this is what they say about it. Presumed but not verified as man-made signal. Detected at various locations worldwide. With amateur equipment, it is not easy to determine eventual frequency shifts. So signal is listed as a 2.5 hertz carrier. So far, the signal has not is not connected with any known geophysical events. Most likely not originating from HARP. Kakona, Alaska, and the U.S., they have little success with generation of ELF signals of re reasonable strength or anything than relative short distances. But, but, what is this? What is this? This says right here, HARP, ULF, amplitude, and this is the Demeter uh, satellite um, collecting it, HARP. And University of Maryland experiment, 2.5 hertz, off the chart. These are called shear Alvin waves. They spin and spiral out into space. Here's another one. Gakona Field. Harp, 2.5 hertz. Bing! And they got a little red circle on it. How about this? We've all seen these. 2.5 hertz, big red stripe. Everybody says, it's. oh, that's not harp. It is harp. We can prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt. They use a thing called ionospheric current drive to produce ULF from 0 to 70 hertz and polar electrojet modulation to produce ELF waves from 0 0.001 hertz to 20,000 to 20, hertz. Okay? And as you can see right here, X and O mode, 11 hertz, 29 hertz, 47 hertz, 73 hertz, full and half power, 0.2 hertz. 0.8 hertz, 1.4 hertz, 2.8 hertz. Sorry, I clicked that by accident. Um, 3.8 hertz and 6.4 hertz. That's harp making them that low. That's right. So there's no arguing about this anymore. And harp is producing these elf waves, these shear Alvin waves, emic waves, and magnetosonic waves, which do affect your health, your brain. And this stuff should be banned. So please, guys, uh, come over here, watch Resonance Beings of Frequency, great documentary on how electromagnetic radiation affects your body. 
and then uh, really dig into this stuff. Look at all of the hard facilities, the lar large high-powered radars of the world, and uh, do it while you can because Google is closing my Google Earth program um, by the end of the year. So this won't be around long. We'll try to invent something better to still bring all of this 3D fun to you. But uh, until then, check it out. Um, all the references are there. Harp, Elf Waves, and Mind Control, or Mind Aggravation, you might want to put it. Um, this is all referenced at the bottom. Please check it out. 1,778 other people already have. And I really hope that you guys get this stuff out to everybody because we really need to know the truth about Harp, Ionospheric Eaters, and Elf Generation. By the way, the reason this all matters, they're going to show up on a boat near you very soon. I'll cover this in my next video about how they're using them on trucks with the microwave ionosphere reconfiguration ground-based emitter, which is basically a harp on a trailer. They're putting them on boats to melt methane clouds to generate sunshine reflecting noctilucent clouds and increasing amounts in the mesosphere, which reflects sun's energy back into space. That's right, using harp to attack atmospheric methane. Very crazy, and they want to use the other heaters as well to do geoengineering with Project Lucy and the sky with diamonds. Compressing methane into diamond dust. And the straw man high frequency array, how they're putting them along the equator, along this green band, and the optimal elf region, which is right here. So look for an elf boat coming to a ocean near you. They are called the straw man high frequency array, and that's why harp is no longer necessary not just because they have vlf facilities everywhere to talk so there's a lot left to cover i'm going to continue this series we'll go through each one of my articles until we all get to the bottom of this and then i'm going to probably stop talking about harp until we see iscat 3d in 2016 hopefully so with that unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot nothing is going to get better it's not For radiation to analyze their research in 1973. The committee's members raised concerns over potentially serious health problems related to the technology, though their worries carried little weight with militarists desiring a different message. Sound familiar? The ad hoc committee's findings only reached the public once Senator Gaylord Nelson, an environmentalist and progressive Democrat, raised a stink and released a report, the report himself. God bless him. So um, this facility allegedly was closed and they said the reason that they closed it was improvements in communications technology or changing re and changing requirements of today's Navy made elf communication system no longer necessary. Davis said all communications with submarines will now be done by 12 very low frequency transmitters located worldwide. These VLF facilities worldwide, as you can see here, you come up here to Awesome, click on this, and then you go here, and you can go see them. There's two antennas there. You can scroll down, come here, VTX, shaped like a diamond, a couple of these, kind of shaped like the Star of David, oddly enough. Um, this one's not on cam. Let's go over here to Harold Holt at this one. And Harold Holt's a real well-known one, as you can see here. Um, here I put these directly on top of each antenna pole. You can see the shadow coming from it there so you know that I'm being accurate with this. And there's a picture associated with that that you can see. Here's the transmitter's front. It's shaped like a diamond or a star. So um, these facilities are what they're using now to speak with uh, submarines. And what do we need uh, the harp to create L4 if you've already got it covered? Well, anyway, um, there's another L facility. It's over in Russia, and it's actually just on this, this tower right here. And it says that it's actually 10 decibels more powerful than the U.S. Navy 76 hertz ELF transmission system. So they got this one tower. It's 10 decibels louder. That's uh, three times. I think three decibels is double the volume. So anyway, um, that's much louder. <laughs> and it doesn't cover multiple two states and you know several miles of cable. But regardless, uh, the Russians have one as well. It's called Zevs, and it's at Tula Blast. Well, those are old school. This is all old school. Everything I showed you before, very old school. The new school is HARP. 
and uh, these ionospheric heaters and what they do is heart produce 3.6 million watts with these diesel engines and some natural gas and they turn it into electricity they they pump it into the sky it becomes 5 billion watts 5 gigawatts or as Doc Brown in uh, Back to the Future said 1.21 gigawatts which was a lightning bolt so 1.21 gigawatts is a lightning bolt, and that's what they needed to travel through time and space, and HARP produces five of those, five gigawatts. Well, they're building an even bigger one over in Norway called IceCat 3D, and it's going to be 100 billion watts, 100 gigawatts. According to Bernard Eastland, John Hersher, and a whole bunch of other people, 100 gigawatts is what you need to modify the jet stream. So stay tuned for that. Regardless, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of argument about this 2.5 hertz signal coming from HARP on um, these low, extremely, extremely low frequency. They're actually not even in the ELF range. ELF is supposed to be three to three hundred hertz. These are below three hertz. So we're talking about magnetosonic, shear Alvin waves, emic waves, these sorts of things. These are these are terms you're probably not familiar with, but I'm just trying to give these to the scientific guys out there that are interested. 2.5 hertz signal active. This is from Trond. Uh, it's a VLF website for radio guys, and this is what they say about it. Presumed but not verified as man-made signal. Detected at various locations worldwide. With amateur equipment, it is not easy to determine eventual frequency shifts, so signal is listed as a 2.5 hertz carrier. So far, the signal has not is not connected with any known geophysical events, most likely not originating from HARP. Kakona, Alaska, and the U.S., they have little success with generation of ELF signals of re reasonable strength or anything than relative short distances. But, but, what is this? What is this? This says right here. HARP, ULF, amplitude, and this is the Demeter uh, satellite um, collecting it. HARP and Udimer University of Maryland experiment, 2.5 hertz, off the chart. These are called shear Alvin waves. They spin and spiral out into space. Here's another one. Kakona Field, HARP, 2.5 hertz, bing, and they got a little red circle on it. How about this? We've all seen these. 2.5 hertz, big red stripe. Everybody says, it's oh, that's not harp. It is harp. We can prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt. They use a thing called ionospheric current drive to produce ULF from 0 to 70 hertz and polar electrojet modulation to produce ELF waves from 0 0.001 hertz to 20,000 to 20, hertz. Okay? And as you can see right here, X and O mode, 11 hertz, 29 hertz, 47 hertz, 73 hertz, full and half power, 0.2 hertz, 0.8 hertz, 1.4 hertz, 2.8 hertz. Sorry, I clicked that by accident. Um, 3.8 hertz and 6.4 hertz. That's harp making them that low. That's right. So there's no arguing about this anymore. And harp is producing these ELF waves, these shear Alvin waves, emic waves, and magnetosonic waves, which do affect your health, your brain, and this stuff should be banned. So please, guys, uh, come over here, watch Resonance Beings of Frequency, great documentary on how electromagnetic radiation affects your body, and then uh, really dig into this stuff. Look at all of the heart facilities, the lar large high-powered radars of the world, and uh, do it while you can, because Google is closing my Google Earth program. Um, by the end of the year so this won't be around long we'll try to invent something better to still bring all of this 3d fun to you but uh, until then check it out um, all the references are there harp elf waves and mind control or mind aggravation you might want to put it um, this is all referenced at the bottom please check it out 1778 other people already have and I really hope that you guys get this stuff out to everybody because we really need to know the truth about harp, ionospheric heaters, and elf generation. By the way, the reason this all matters, they're going to show up on a boat near you very soon. I'll cover this in my next video about how they're using them on trucks with the microwave ionosphere reconfiguration ground-based emitter, which is basically a harp on a trailer. They're putting them on boats 
to melt methane clouds to generate sunshine reflecting noctilucent clouds and increasing amounts in the mesosphere which reflects sun's energy back into space that's right using harp to attack atmospheric methane very crazy and they want to use the other heaters as well to do geoengineering with project lucy and the sky with diamonds compressing methane into diamond dust and the straw man high frequency array how they're putting them along the equator along this green band and the optimal elf region which is right here so look for an elf boat coming to a ocean near you they are called the straw man high frequency array and that's why harp is no longer necessary not just because they have VLF facilities everywhere to talk so there's a lot left to cover. I'm going to continue this series. We'll go through each one of my articles until we all get to the bottom of this, and then I'm going to probably stop talking about HARP until we see ISCAT 3D in 2016, hopefully. So with that, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. We have so much knowledge in this world, we have a lot of knowledge about almost everything. But what do we actually do with all the knowledge? Do we integrate it into our feet? At, 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 by this I mean, of course, do we really understand? Because understanding is taking action and so on. Well, when we look at the sky here, what do you see? Or actually, what do you feel? Because do you feel something by watching this sky? Does this look totally normal? Do you feel something in your stomach, in your solar plexus, in your mind, in your head, in your heart, in your legs, in your toes? What do you feel and what do you see? Sometimes it's very good to feel and see or add these two together. Actually go outside and see what you're feeling. Do you understand what I'm getting at? But please pay attention to what you're going to witness now in the next seven eight minutes because it's quite interesting really to see and and then to start being more aware start paying more attention and thereby start becoming more conscious because when we know what things are we will not be so much influenced by them because we can change our thoughts we can change our feelings and thereby we can change our reality so we will not be part of the global game you can say the global mind control game so thank you for listening and thank you for sharing with all you know. Thank you very much. I just have to show you this if you are uncertain about what scalar clouds it's, what's the hub pattern of the sky is, uh, because it's very obvious here at night. Or oh, it's, it's about 10 minutes for 11 now in the evening. And we see how the sky is looking. I'm just turning the camera now to the sky directly. And here we have a very beautiful pattern actually. It's so obvious that clouds normally don't form this way if they are natural clouds, uh, which they aren't. So there's extreme uh, harp activity going on here. Now I'm walking you can of course you can feel my shaking of the camera and I'll just turn it a bit over here so you can see how the cloud is over the clouds are over here it's very strange looking and it's very heavy you can say it's like a pressure going on in your head it's like yeah it's like a it's like there's a heavy mobile phone radiation going on actually right now. That's how I feel it. It's like a disconnection between the two brain hemispheres. It, it's what we also call switching of the brain. This is what is actually going on when the, when the sky is like this. And you see how obvious it is. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, and 
almost every people should be able to see that this is not a normal cloud formation. Uh, look at the straight lines, look at how it's building up. And we take a little a little walk further to see what's in the back of the house here. Actually it seems like I'm very lucky, it seems like they have just chosen where I am, so that's very good. Then somebody cares about me, that's that's perfect. We actually see in the background here it's it's not that intense. So actually it's the famous hot blanket that has been pulled over and is building up. This is actually very amazing. I haven't seen it like this before actually over this place. Of course it has been like this, but this is exceptional because the patterns are so easy to to observe now with the light that we have right now. Look at this pattern here in the sky. All the lines, all the lines are straight lines. Hmm, is this a coincidence? Or is God playing some kind of trick? What is going on? And the birds are going to bed now. It's wonderful to hear how the natural life is still working. Just look at this sky. It seems like a message of a huge transformation I seen. Something is going on. This is a day of it's a mirror of reality today. It's a fifth flint in the Mayan calendar and I must say this is really showing a lot about reality. What is going on in the sky. We all have it all here and it's marvelous actually to observe. I will just give you a glimpse of the sky on the other side of the place here. It's getting more and more intense. It's um, it's amazing actually to be watching this. The sky is becoming more and more hot and I wonder if some of the things I'm running in this house is actually working since this is so extremely extremely hot right now. Um, perhaps I should change the frequency inside. Well perhaps I'm doing this, who knows. Um, but it feels in a way that you have you have got a hat on your head and it's quite quite it's not really uncomfortable at the moment but it's um, it's just a little it's just a little irritating you can say or annoying um, So these should be perfectly, perfectly normal clouds as the weather institutions say all over the world. But of course it's not and it's all directed and it's all manipulated and it's all propaganda and it's all weather consensus run by the WMO, the World Meteorologist Organization under the UN. And you can say the UN is really the beast and manipulating the whole planet with all the different kinds of actions. You can say the climate stuff and the swine flu vaccination and vaccination in general and the cover up of what the mobile phone radiation and what all these things are really doing. So you don't have to be a genius, you don't have to be Einstein to add two and two. Um, that's for sure. Now I just climbed out on a little where I can have a better view, just back of the house, and we see how the the sky is really aligning here with the scalar cloud waves, scalar cloud patterns and the straight lines and
It's a wonderful quiet here. Yes, you see the, the ray guard uh, around my neck. It is the personal one, a rather small one. Of course, there are existing different sizes, more, greater ones. And this uh, is now on my thymus point, uh, where the uh, immune system is situated be beyond the, the bone, uh, the, the breastbone. And uh, uh, this uh, consists of different materials. Most important is the, the powder, the crystals, the, and they are attracting the scalar waves and not the Hertzian waves. That means if someone uh, is testing the effect on Hertzian waves, he will not find any effect. And this is uh, the purpose of uh, the Regard not to change our Herzchen wave world. As, uh, if the Herzchen wave would have been reduced by the Regard, the transmitter, the emitter of the Herzchen waves would be forced to uh, enhance its uh, amplitude and its strength and energy and the effect would be, uh, may even be a bad one. And so, as uh, all our communication, our electromagnetic communication is based on Hertzian waves, we do not want to interfere in this world. But according to what uh, Professor Meil, uh, the, the, the Pope, inside the question of scalar waves, says, the the scalar waves or longitudinal waves or Tesla waves, three names for the same phenomenon. Like he says, the scalar waves are biologically the important ones. They are used by nature for every kind of communication between our cells, between our organs, between every entity, having uh, a kind of consciousness, also between animals, between trees, between plants. They are all communicating by scalar waves. But the technical, technically produced scalar waves, they are the dangerous ones. And they are produced as a side effect by every Hertzian wave emitter or transmitter. There are vortexes in, in the uh, near field of the antenna, there are vortexes, and these vortexes enroll uh, and become scalar waves. And the technical scalar waves are the danger of our time. They are responsible for about 80% of the uh, technical electrosmog. Unfortunately, nobody is able, beside a few advanced scientists, normal, normal scientists are not uh, able to detect scalar waves, to measure them, to, uh, to show uh, in, in, in uh, experiments how they work, beside what we will see uh, a moment later beside with the experimental set of Professor Meil, which is an imitation of what Tesla did in Boulder, Colorado, about a hundred years ago. Uh, and uh, so between Tesla and Meil, there's a close uh, scientific connection. 
And if we accept that the scalar waves are the most important, dangerous uh, kind of waves or fields, we should accept that the crystals in this um, ray guard is able to attract them. That means uh, between emitter and uh, receiver, a special field will uh, come ahead. That's the main difference to Herzchen waves. Herzchen waves are, uh, are spreading all around and uh, have a radial uh, way of uh, emission. Uh, scalar waves are doing this only for a few moments after starting of the emission. And then, after they found a receiver, it is a close connection only between emitter and receiver. And nobody else will be disturbed. And in this case, my body may be or would be the receiver. And of course, this we want to prevent. That the body suffers from especially the 2.4 gigahertz the most dangerous way of uh, electromagnetic communication. We want to prevent that the body, with its uh, biological window, does not have to accept all the color waves, but this ray guard works like a victim. It attracts the color waves in, in the, the powder, and then the powder converts the scalar waves into vortexes, and the vortexes are then accepted by the metal vortexes inside. They are the second receiver, and there the scalar waves stay. They will not go further into the body, but uh, the body is. Uh, no longer the stronger uh, receiver, but the ray guard is a stronger receiver co in comparison with the body. And the body uh, has the possibility to uh, not to suffer as it was before.